Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bank Feeds Matching Deposit from a Customer to Bank Feed Deposit. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file we started up in a prior presentation, the bank feed file. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top again and duplicating again. Let's go back to the tab to the middle, accounting drop down, open up our balance sheet report, one of the major financial statement reports, tab and to the right, accounting drop down, open up the other major financial statement report, the income statement. Changing the date range up top, selecting the drop down, we want 2022, starting in January, ending in December of 2022. And there we have it running and updating that. Let's go back to the first tab now and go into where our bank feeds are located, which we uploaded in a prior presentation, accounting dropdown located in the bank accounts. And then within the bank accounts, we got our bank feed up top that we connected to managing the accounts. And we're gonna go to the account transactions. And then I'm gonna go to the first tab which is the reconcile tab. So we've been basically trying to, as best we can, construct our books from the bank feeds, but now dip it into those areas where we might have a little complexity in doing that and have to come up with some other systems to work around. Let's go to our flowchart to see what I'm talking about. This is from the QuickBooks desktop, but we're just really looking at the flow of the forms, which are the same for any kind of accounting system. We're on the customer cycle here, and we're trying to think about how we can fit the bank feeds into a customer cycle when we have an accrual concept we have to put in place, meaning we do the work first and therefore has to invoice or bill the client and have to track the accounts receivable. So that would be if we had the type of industry would drive whether or not we would have to do that, right? So if we're in an industry where we have to do that, we're gonna have to do that. Uh, we can't just say, well, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna be on a cash-based system. It's like, well, no. People aren't gonna do business with you then, right? So we have to invoice them. So that would be like an accounting firm or that could be like a law firm or landscaping. We do the work, we invoice the client. So obviously the invoice doesn't have any cash impacted or affected from that transaction. So we can't do that transaction from the bank feeds. But then uh, after the invoice has been input, when we get paid, we saw that it might be possible to connect the bank feeds to the invoice, waiting until the payment clears the bank and then connecting it to the invoice. However, you can only do that if uh, you're getting a payment that is in the exact same amount as the amount on the invoice and you don't have kind of grouping of multiple invoices or other forms of payments together. Things that can muddy that up would be if there's credit card charges or a middle person in the transaction that kind of charges fees or groups the deposits like a credit card company or something like a PayPal or Stripe like that, then it, we might not be able to connect the bank feeds to uh, an actual invoice. Uh, and if they group the payments together, meaning we have multiple invoices, for example, or invoices and sales receipts possibly that are being grouped together by a credit card company or something like that, then it's going to hit our bank account in a one lump sum of multiple uh, multiple invoices, right, are combined together. And so we're not going to be able to just match it with the bank feeds. We're going to have to do the more of a full service system, which means we're going to have to receive the payment. Now, when we receive the payment, uh, that's when we can deposit it into the bank at that point in time. However, we might need another step there because we might wanna set up like a clearing account because again, we might have some system where the credit card company is grouping payments together in a way that we cannot easily uh, group together on our side and therefore put it into a clearing account and then take it out of the clearing account and put it in as a deposit. Now, if we have to do that, then we're gonna be reliant uh, on the bank fees just to match. So what we want to do is make our deposit in our system the same format, the same dollar amount, the same grouping of money into the bank as will show up on the bank side, which will come through the bank feeds. We still need to use the bank feeds or can use the bank seeds, 
but the bank feeds will not be recording anything here. Instead, it will be simply helping us to reconcile, which is still quite important. All right, so let's, let me see if I can see what I'm talking about here. Let's pick a, a payment, one of these deposits, and kind of do our same thing where we're gonna like work backwards to uh, get to that deposit amount. Uh, so let me find one first. Let me stop talking while I look. All right, here we go. I found one. Let's take this 150 here. Now, now let's imagine that we have multiple invoices that were in play that are making up that 150. So I'll make multiple invoices and receive the payments on those invoices. And you'll kind of see why hopefully we can't just tie the invoice out to here, uh, but rather we'll have to you know, basically make the deposit on our end. So let's imagine we're gonna go backwards now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the invoice, which normally would happen first in our time frame, but now we're gonna, we're gonna so you're imagining this happened first before that deposit, right? So let's say this is customer, let's make another customer just to, uh, customer, just to switch things up. Number three, customer three, I'm so creative with my names, my customer names. Creativity is one of my uh, blessings one of my strong points on making up names. Uh, so then we're gonna say this happened on October 1st. Let's say the, the end date 17th. Okay, that'll work, whatever. And then let's go down and say that we sold, let's just, let's just put a random description, uh, service, service item. Usually we would wanna have items that were describing what we sell because that'll make things easier, but that's not where our focus is right now. Our focus is on this grouping issue. So let's say we sold something for $100. I'm not gonna deal with the sales tax because again, the sales tax would be, we've talked about sales tax, but that's not really our point of focus here. Noting here though, what is our point of focus is that this will increase the accounts receivable by $100 and the other side will go into the sales account for $100, a uh, revenue account. However, when it came, when the deposit came